Welcome back to Barto and Review, episode number 63. This is reviewing the 63rd episode of Barto, Naruto Next Generation's anime, Sasuke's Secret Weapon. Yep. Now, this is pulled directly from the film, obviously, the story for this particular one. And in the film, this only took about this particular episode itself is adapted from at least about five or five. Yeah, at least about five minutes of foot, at least one scene in the film. This one just actually about two scenes in the film. Mostly, this is expansion upon what was seen in the film, like Baruto running through the hospital to the outside. Though in the case of the film, it was a quick little run and he was already outside. Here, it's just well, he goes from like from the room where his mother is, and he just somehow runs across Shikadai. Enogen and uh, Chocho. He just runs past him, doesn't say anything to them. Mitsuke is still out cold. Yeah, in the film, Mitsuke is perfectly fine. Uh, this is a change. When Mitsuke got knocked out from last episode, that was a direct change from the film itself when Mitsuke just didn't go for some reason. Yeah, in the film, they never get an explanation of why he just didn't go on the mission. Same thing with Sadara. Yeah, this episode bothers to give reasons for certain things. Like also in the film, that somehow Baruto has Sasuke's headband in the in, in this episode. Sasuke gives it to him because it feels like the right thing to do, and he puts it on before Hanada sees him uh, wearing it. In the movie, he Hanada sees him put it on. And just he acts. He does his he does his father's classic pose. Of just like tucking his hand like two fingers just underneath his uh his headband and just doing like a little salute. Um, something that Naruto did when he was younger. And he spends a good like half the episode wearing Naruto's part one jacket. Yeah, I... In the film, they never gave Bob an explanation why. Here, it looks like he just felt like putting it on. Though, here, they show a lot more tired it up than it was in the film, where apparently part of the sleeve is gone. Um, there's, a, there's a tear in the jacket itself, just like in Baruto's jacket. Though for Baruto in the series, this is the second time the jacket's been torn. The last time it was torn was actually in the Hidden Mist arc. Yep, the Hidden Mist arc was actually the last official time this happened. And I'm glad the fact Kimura got a little bit more screen time in this film than she did uh, when this particular part of the movie was shown than it was in the actual film. Mm -hmm. And instead of having Mitsuke in the scene where Baruto is going off to rescue Naruto... Here, it's Sadra's there, which is like in the film. Though, here they actually have a reason why she's not going. Because according to Sasuke, she's the only other person in the village who can use Shuragan. Which, that's a good reason to keep her behind. I personally feel as though that's a good reason. Because Sasuke is the only other person alive who knows how to use Shuragan. So, it makes perfect sense for her to stay behind. And switching out Mitsuke for Shikadai, that makes a little more sense than it did in the film, where Shikadai is there. Not much in the film. Here, I'm glad the fact the show actually bothered to get the, get the character some development. And he actually has some screen time and stuff to do. I mean, he looks like he's, uh, when you last seen him in the episode, he looks like he's still a bit resentful toward Naruto. But he will listen to part of the explanation when he comes back. Fine. But at least not like in the film where Hanada was against that first a bar to go with him. Here, she does not have a really big problem with that at all because Sasuke is with her and, and she, she tells Baruto, I'll leave your father in your hands. Okay, fine. And I'm glad that Kakashi actually manages to do something because in the film, if anybody's seen the film, Kakashi makes a brief cameo in the film but he doesn't do anything. Here, he's actually in the episode, and he actually has some dialogue. And apparently, him and Shikamaru briefly to go with the village while Naruto's away, which is actually not a bad idea to do, because while Sh Shikamaru is technically Naruto's advisor, and, well, Kakashi is the previous Hokage, so it kind of makes sense that he would briefly take over the village, while Naruto's missing. He's not dead. He is just declared missing. Yep. So. I got a hand to the additional dialogue. They give this episode. And I love the fact that Sadar got a little bit more to do. At this particular part of the story. Than she did in the film. Where in the film she just. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, half the time she feel like she didn't do very much. But thanks to using this arc in the in the actual show itself, she gets a lot more to do, and I'm personally very happy of that. Um, I'm sure when my friend Edgar gets up this bigger point, he'll be so happy of how they treat Sadara in this arc. It's a lot better treatment than they do in the film. Yeah, a lot of characters who appear in the film get a lot better treatment in the show than they do in the film because in the film, a lot of the stuff related to a lot of characters was cut due to time. Here, with the show, they have plenty of time to tell the story, and roughly this arc has been going on for, oh, I'd say almost, I wouldn't say 10 episodes, I think it's like good 12. Let's see. I think it's, uh, let's see, this particular arc started with, let's see, episode 53, yeah, so this arc has been going on for roughly 11 episodes. Yes, this arc is roughly 11 episodes in, and I love all the additions they made. Expanding on scenes, giving more dialogue to certain stuff, and I especially love it that the the other four, four of the five Kage actually managed to get some dialogue before they go off to rescue Naruto, because in the film it's like, oh, they're just there, and they go off to rescue Naruto. Here, they meet up with Sasuke and Baruto in Naruto's office, they have a good conversation about going out to rescue them, and of course, Sasuke says Baruto's coming along because he's Naruto's son, and he's his pupil. And plus, they see his potential in him as a great shinobi. Okay, fine. Um, I've got to point this out, though. Uh, Kenoshi who is the Tazakagi. <laughs> I've got to admit this about her. She is a smoking hot woman. And she's only like in her early 30s. Yeah, she's only in her early 30s and she's smoking hot still. I mean, because it's been like 15 years since the war. I have no idea how old this woman is. But man, she's smoking hot and she loves showing off her, her lovely legs. Yeah. And no, she didn't. I remember her doing this when she was younger. And the, when she was younger, she actually full wore full body suits. I think because she's a little, she she probably took a lot of let's say sexiness advice from me, uh, not me personally. That uh, May the Tazakagi who the Mazakagi who was Chotro's uh pre who was his, her, his predecessor as the Mazakagi probably took a lot of advice from her of how to act sexy as leader, because it seems like he she she basically adapts a lot of her attitude and her how she moves like her she probably spent like a good amount of time with her after the war and she probably kind of probably had a theory that or at least possibly it was told by she was someone told her that she was going to succeed one day her father as the Tazikage, and she wanted to get advice one of the Arkages how to be a proper leader especially a female leader and she probably didn't have much in common with Sanade, so she went to Mei, the Mazakagi. And as far as I know, history-wise, I don't think, uh, from what I can remember reading reading about the the hidden mist, the hidden stone, and the hidden uh, mist village, they did have a partial history with each other, like a like a bad blood history. But that was with two of their leaders, like the second Mazakagi and the second Tazakagi. Those two had a history together. But I don't, from what I can tell, I, this is just a theory of mine. I think that during a time skip that she must have met with her and became good friends with her. And she probably took a lot of advice and she probably mentored her how to be a proper leader of her village. Not a bad idea. She may have also taken tips from Sanadi. And speaking of Sanadi, where is Sanadi in this series? I mean, Suzuni was actually referenced in this episode, and Sanadi herself has appeared in one physical episode herself. But as for as for Sanadi herself, who should be still alive at this point, though she'd probably be in her... It's just my theory. I think she might be in her 70s by now, but I'm kind of like, where is Sanadi? Kakashi's there, you see him, you see he's popped up several times in the series, thank you God that he actually does physically appear, and the fact I'm glad he actually appears uh, in this episode more just a quick cameo, because 
that's basically all he's done for the past few episodes, just appears in quick cameos. But I'm glad the fact he made physical appearances in the series. But in the case of the previous uh, Kage, him and May are probably the only two who actually physically appear in the series. Uh, though Gar himself, you can kind of count him as a first generation Kage, but he's been Kazakage Kage since he was in his, was in his, uh, in his mid-teens. Yeah, he's been Kazakage for almost 20 years now. And as for in the case of the Mazakage, Tazakage, and the Razakage, their predecessors do not physically appear in the series at all, which is so bizarre. And yet, apparently, at... Well, and the other ones, just basically the Tazakagi and the Razakagi, their predecessors do not physically appear in the series, and yet the previous ones appear for the immediate predecessors for Okage and Mazakagi appear, but not the other ones, which is so really weird. And I'm still kind of thinking, like, are they going to have an episode in the like, arc in the future where they have the characters go to the Hidden Sand Village? I personally would love to see that again, because... The village itself has an appearance in the series, like it appeared in this very arc, but it appears very briefly in a brief scene when uh, Shiki and his group uh, go to Hidden, Hidden Leaf for the shooting exams. Yeah, that's probably the first time it was actually shown in the actual series, and it was also shown in a, in a flashback, for, in one, in a Shiki flashback, but that's it. That's the only time the Hidden Mist has been shown. The Stone Village has never been shown in this series at all. I think even the previous series has never made a physical appearance at all. I think there's been certain like a couple of different places inside the, the inside the hidden stone village has been seen, but the village itself has never physically been seen in this series. Uh in the case of the hidden hidden uh I think it's the Cloud Village. That village itself in Barto has never been seen. In Naruto Shippuden, yes it has. Several times, period in several arcs. But this series Nope, it doesn't. Don't know why, though. But I would love it if they actually took like a trip to one of the other villages, because I like it when they do that, because it makes the show a little more interesting. Kind of like what they did with the first, uh, the Team 7 Forest Mission arc, which is roughly like two episodes long, but it was really damn good. I thoroughly enjoyed it myself. But in the case of this particular arc, this is probably by far... The uh, second longest arc of the entire series. This is even longer than almost every single arc before this one. A lot of the other arcs are roughly like five or six episodes at most. I mean, the first arc of the series of this one was 14 episodes. And the rate this particular arc is going at, i probably say it'll probably wrap up by episode 65 at most. Because next episode they're going to rescue Naruto. And that's probably going to last for just next episode and probably the following one. Because I think the fight between... Excuse me, uh, Barto, the Air Force Kage, and Sasuke versus Momoshiki and his, and his two henchmen. That'll probably last about two or three episodes. So it could wrap up by episode 65 or 66. Just depends on what the NMS wanted to do. But this by far was a great episode and great setup for the next week's episode. And I'm looking forward to it. And. So, that's really it. Um, I was thinking of doing a couple more anime reviews today, but because of how late it is, I probably won't get to those probably until tomorrow, because I've been procrastinating on them. I'm sorry about that. Uh, and also expect some comic corners tomorrow, at least about, probably about five of them at most. And expect a novel review in the future, probably by next week, at most. <laughs> And also, I have next five days off from work, because I'm only working two days next week. Yeah, that's basically what's going to happen with that. Alright, so, until we see you on my next review, bye.